Good morning, folks. Let's just say if you are half awake right now, hit pause and grab a coffee. We're going to be hitting hard from the sun to the unseen finally revealed, starting at spaceweathernews.com. And we're finding the last 24 hours on our star not very calm. We didn't have big flares or CMEs come our way, but the filament eruptions are numerous, especially off the limbs, including from an active region incoming on the north. You can more easily see the filament activity in this combined 304 and 211 angstrom view, and while the sun ejects plasma here at Earth, we entered geomagnetic storm conditions early this morning. It's the red bar at the bottom. It is a minor event, but the cause is more the story. It wasn't a CME impact or solar flare or coronal hole stream sending geospace into more turbulent conditions. It's the phi angle flip in blue, the solar wind magnetic reversal coming with the heliospheric current sheet. This is the third time the rippling electric field of the solar system has produced geomagnetic unrest this sunspot cycle, and this is also where we'll find ourselves at the end of the show, just at the galactic level. But we are starting with a prolific Avi Loeb, and as I read it, I sat and wondered if you realized how much the inflows and outflows, the expansion and contraction, can be used to explain the galactic rotation curves where they're blaming dark matter. If you're listening, Avi, you also got a nice shout out from a different intellectual delight on archive yesterday. This one for the cosmologically minded. Going to take a little shot at this one. They're finding massive stars where they don't belong, far off the galactic disk. The problem is that stars of this size should only form near the plane. They don't have enough time to move far away from it. For example, one star they think should have taken about 39 million years to make its journey, but they think it's only been alive for 5 million years. And now instead of suggesting that perhaps their understanding of formation conditions or stellar lifetimes is off, they suggest that these massive stars off the disk are mergers of two smaller, longer-lived stars. Just let that explanation roll around upstairs a moment. So let's shift gears here with a look at a recurrent nova. Their ability to see these blasts born again in subsequent blasts is one of a thousand lines of evidence that they don't know Nova and have barely begun to scratch the surface of finding them all. But scratch they do as we come to a thousand strands of the galaxy. The Meerkat release is out, and oh my goodness, this is one of the most amazing products I have ever seen in my more than a decade of doing this. The detail of the filaments and the bubbles from Nova events is incredible. To be able to see these magnetic field strands in the same wavelength as uncountable tiny Nova events are spotted throughout the galactic plane is like Christmas to an observer. But as beautiful as this is, we have two brilliant things we can bring together from this work into the galactic arm of catastrophism, the nature of the strands, and what's creating that nature. The nature of the magnetic field filaments is very powerful, extreme electron acceleration, and more importantly, spacing. They are somehow being found equidistant apart from one another, which is not some random bit of luck. They are spaced due to the fact that they are part of a system, one with a very specific spacing and patterns and resonance and oscillation and harmonics, to the point where they must have an incredible source powering them. And boy, do they ever. First, they are likely the vertical components of the total system galactic magnetic field. These are evenly spaced like L-shells of any other dipole magnetic field in a sphere magnet, and that source is amplified within the plane, which is why we find the strands most visible there. The plane isn't a plane, of course, but a current sheet, and yes, we are back to that rippling electric wave, but at the galactic level. This is not quite as simple as the wave and rippling radial field, but at the peaks and the troughs, we see instability-driven outflows of the fields to the point where it bulges up and down from the plane and then joins that larger system of fields, which is the vertical strands we're seeing. And as we're seeing everything from the bipolar nova ejecta to the faintest and tiniest of nova bubbles, we are getting confirmation of the logical extension of one of the greatest works of last year. They know the rippling sheet and Parker instability is at the galactic level, but they couldn't get their models and theory and math to match with the observational reality until this crew realized you need nova events in the plane, ones we don't see, and the answer is not mysteriously dim supernova, it is many, many, many smaller nova that now Meerkat is starting to be able to see.
That is observational evidence of the galactic magnetic reversal fields and their excitement in the galactic plane is the vertical strands. And after that crew basically said, we need things like solar micronova over and over again to explain reality. Now we're starting to see them. We greatly appreciate your support. All of this from the large scale galactic magnetic fields down to the geophysical changes at the smaller scale now. It's all explained and broken down in our Christmas Day documentary, The Earth Disaster Documentary. It's linked below the video. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.